Oh, hey, hi. I'm Chris and Chris and welcome to So Cool Science. Science you can do right at home. I'm just hanging out with the world's largest freshwater fish and going over today's science file. In today's science file, it says, How are fish able to breathe underwater? Well, that's an awesome question. Try this. You will need a large glass jar, some rocks, a few fake plants, and an air pump. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your very own fish tank with stuff you already have around the house. So, start by getting yourself one of these massive pickle jars. By the way, run this sucker through the dishwasher a couple of times, because we're trying to make a fish tank, not pickled herring. Ha! Okay, to get started, we're gonna need some of these rocks. By the way, you don't have to pay for these. I didn't, I just got these from my neighbor's rock garden. Hey, the way I see it, if you don't want your rocks taken, don't go to bed before me. <laughs> okay, so these little plastic plant things aren't necessary, but I think they're pretty wicked cool, so I'm gonna add them. By the way, you don't need to buy these. You can just get them from, you know, maybe your grandma, you know, from a previous fish tank she had. And now all you gotta do is fill this sucker to the top and add some fish. Okay, so about the only thing you're actually gonna have to buy is one of these little air pumps here. You know, because you're gonna have to put air in your pump, in your tank, in your tank, not your pump. And voila, there you have it, your very own at-home fish tank. Okay, so how do fish get air out of liquid? I mean, air is a gas, right? And, and water is a liquid. Well, don't look at me. Take a closer look at this. Unlike people who breathe oxygen by forcing air into their bodies, fish use a process known as osmosis, a process where high concentrations want to spread out equally in any given space. Fish take oxygen-rich water in through their mouths and push a current of water out through the gills, which contain tissues similar to the pages of a book. This creates a large, massive area where gases can exchange from outside and from within inside a fish's body. As a current of water passes through their gills, high concentrations of oxygen diffuse through the thin page-like membrane structures, as well as high concentrations of CO2 diffuse out of the fish's body and back into the water. You might think that if fish just use osmosis to breathe, they should be able to breathe out of water as well. However, just like gravity pulls the pages of a book closed, gravity also squeezes gill structures closed as well, reducing the area of gas exchange. Since the fish can no longer push a current of water, which would keep these page-like structures open, high concentrations of CO2 build up in the fish's body and cause death. Not all fish are unable to breathe out of water. Some fish, like the lungfish and the catfish, are able to stay out of water for long periods of time. Most of these fish can do this using their swim bladder as a primitive lung, as well as the ability to exchange gases through their skin. So now you know more about vertebrate gill breathers. You know, making your own aquarium right at home is why science is so cool.